It's how you react to that thought. It's just like when somebody uh, come at you in a, in, a, in a sideways, you know. You have to start thinking. You have to start thinking about what God, what what would Jesus do? How Jesus handle that situation? And the word going to come to you. God said, "I'll fight your battles. You be still. Let me fight." So we fight and let God win our battles. And see, my anger can only my anger can get me two places. My anger can get me two places. In jail. I inhale. Simple as that. And you're reading, we're reading this scripture now. You see, yeah, my, yeah, do, do, the, the uh, scripture, you're reading that scripture in Hebrew now. See, that word is so sharp, it drives the devil. The devil trembles when Jesus steps on scene because he knows he can't win. And so and we started believing in that and do, following that word, what the word say, hey, we can defeat the devil. See, I can't defeat the devil in my power. I ain't strong enough to fight with the devil. He's slick, he's cunning, he's crafty. He renewed real good. Get you to thinking about something other, something, something you desire, and and he, he and he got us going. Yeah, Mike. It comes to temptation. Uh, we talked about this Wednesday. And joked about it, uh, Flip Wilson saying the devil made me do it. But uh, if you have your Bibles, turn to James, the first chapter, starting at verse 13. James, the first chapter. Um, actually, we're going to start at verse 12. And Reverend Lewis had um, a lure to this, but I want to give you the scripture where you can go. First, uh, James, starting at verse 12, it says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. For when he has been approved, yes, he will receive yes. the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. And we all know to love the Lord is to obey him. Verse 13, let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted, tempted. by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. Please remember that the devil, one of his names is the tempter. So you have to understand where temptation truly comes from. Um, verse 14, but each one is tempted, listen closely, when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. That's what we were talking about in 1 John, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. This is the original sin. This is what happened in the garden when Eve stood and stared at that tree long enough. It was a thought that came from her, and the devil came and capitalized on her desires. Yeah, yeah. So then it goes and says, then when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. And this is what we have to take a look at. This is what the Bible tells us and lets us know. With the uh, lesson this morning, it's simply, you fight these temptations with the word, but don't get it twisted. The devil only capitalizes first what we have desired of our flesh. Yes. So yes. we're literally giving the devil the ammunition yeah. To yeah. fire back at us. Yeah. Yeah. And so this is where the word of God is imperative. We must not only, I know you, you, you hear, brother, but are you listening? Yeah. It's a difference. Yeah. Yeah. I, I used to hear what my parents would tell me, but a lot of times I didn't listen. So as a result, the thing that they were telling me and warning me about, I fell victim of because I heard them, but I didn't listen. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. let's just be mindful when we go through life and realize that um, a lot of this stuff uh, sometimes we find ourselves in is self-inflicted. Be careful what you 
Allow your mind to dwell on. Yes, yes. Be careful yeah. what kind of thoughts we entertain. Why? Because when time and opportunity cross paths, so you're right. It does so some damage. Right. stories so this the devil was in the room crying he was just boo-hoo so somebody felt sorry for him and went by and asked him the devil said what you crying for he said I'm tired of them folks doing what they want to do and putting it on me So the only power we got to fight against the devil is with God, with the word of God. That's the only power we got to fight against the devil because he's going to put some thoughts there. And, and, and he, like Mike was saying, that desire that we have for this world, fancy things, beautiful things, all this stuff. See, the devil, devil, knows, how, the devil knows how to trick us. He knows how to come at us. When you are at your lowest point, Devil, just like when Jesus was on fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he thought he was going to get Jesus. He was only trying to get Jesus to not to be our Savior, to get off of God's plan. So now we profess to be Christian. We have to start living a Christian life. You can't fool, you can't fool yourself. You know what, we know what we do. We know what, when, see, I don't know about you. But I, I have started the allowing the word of God. This is what I was telling that preacher last night. I said, the reason I know I got Jesus in me, because anytime I want to do something wrong, the Holy Spirit always gets me out of it. See, if we allow the Holy Spirit to lead us, direct our path, and, and, and discern things for us, hey, we will stay with the word of God. We'll live the way that God wants us to live. But we can't cling to the flesh and think we can do it. We cannot do it in the flesh. Flesh do not please God. Spirit. We can only serve God in spirit and in truth. And we and we go to and we got to use we use prayer. Prayer, prayer is the substance. Is the door to our our uh, open the doors to Jesus and God is the Holy Spirit. Prayer. Take everything to God. He's just, the Bible tells us to bring everything to God in prayer. If we started using the scripture, we can overcome the devil. The only way we can do it. And this read uh, earlier you were saying, you can't, you can't get so high-minded you think you got this thing going on. We even, get, we even got some people think that they are better than other people, but ain't nobody better than you, me, or, him, or anybody else. See? But that's the devil. The devil got them thinking like that, and they react on it. I'm more educated, and I'm better than that. You know? Right. Hey, well, that's what you say. But you don't show no love, no understanding of nothing, no, be no concern for nobody else. Yesterday, I, I, I was going up to the bank there on uh, Prairie, uh, uh, Prairieville and uh, in state. I pulled up there, and the man was standing there, and he had this big sign. <laughs> and I know, I know, you know, you got people that play these games, you know. But I sat at that light, and all the time while I was sitting at that light, that sign was staring at me. So I, I said, I got $3 in this dash, in this pocket in his glove pocket i'm gonna give it to him so i gave him and he said bless you man may, may god can bless you he said I thank you for the blessing but you see i have drove by people that i didn't think like think like that and paid no attention but somehow or another you know i, I just felt that like it was god saying give him three dollars you know you driving on a car riding and you know and why you didn't give a man three dollars Whatever he do with it, that's, you know, $3 ain't going to kill him, ain't going to break me, you know. So I gave him these $3. But the thing with this, what I'm saying, see, we, 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 we can't get so high-minded and think that we are better than somebody else. Everybody on the street today is not out there because they want to be there. Some of these people want, want, want jobs and things like a young man came by my house one, uh, here a while back, wanted to, wanted to do my lawn for me. 
And I was out there doing it, and I said, well, I ain't got about two more strokes, you know, I'm going to do it. So I went ahead and did it. But the thing with you, see, everybody out here in this world today is not out there because they want to be there. And, I, and me, myself, I'm no better than them. I'm just blessed by God not to be in the same predicament. So I lost my job. By the grace of God and God's mercy on me, I got it back. I was able to retire at, uh, at 52 years old. See, I can thank God for many things that God has done for me in my life. See, God has brought me a mighty long way. My attitude, yes, sir, I see you, but my attitude, God has helped me with that attitude. Now, when, I, when the flesh wants to jump up, the Holy Spirit says, you can't, you can't walk in the flesh now. You get loose here, you go in jail. Because raising your hand today, you can be killed. Like Brother Wayne was saying, you, you can't win every battle. See? And I know, learned the word of God. You, if you want God to so make your enemy your footstool, you want your enemy to be under your feet, let God do it. What he's saying there, it's not you putting your foot on him, he's just going to say, hey, I respect you. I honor you because you, you know, you, you're a true man of God. When you allow God to, I, I, I got, a, I had a working with this guy, and every time this guy see me, he said, because of what went down and the way he did it, way we, what I did, because God spoke to me that morning. He said, who do you let out, me or you? Now you say you was a child of mine, and you don't talk to this man day after day after day, and told him you was a, you was a Christian. Now act a Christian. I started crying because I wanted a piece of him. But when I went down there and told him I loved him, he was an alcoholic. He was drunk, coming in, staggering, walking down the line. And when the man sat down and explained something to me after I told him I loved him, the next that that at lunchtime he came, he said, "Man, you know what? I ain't never had another man to tell me he loved me. See, my Christianity kicked in." Cause I, hey, I, don't, I ain't too uh, up on telling a man I love him either. But the thing is, I, it did. It said, go down there and talk to him. And I just went down there and told him, man, I love you. Whatever you need, whatever you need to talk to me, I'm here for you. I was doing his job, but he cussed me out. And I wanted to get in him, but see the Holy Spirit, and, and that's what started me to knowing that the Word of God is true. He'll make your enemy your footstool. If you let him do it, he'll make your closest one to you. Look at you for who you are, for what God wants you to be. He'll have your children to respect you better when you're living a godly life. My son, I went and sat down and talked to my son yesterday evening. He cried like a baby. I hadn't seen him in two months. He cried like a baby, and he's got to telling me how much he loved me. I, talk, I tell him all the time, I said, I love my son, but I, he said, Dad, I know you don't like me to be drinking, but this is me. I said, yeah, you grown. But I love you, son. I love you just like you did the day when you was born. Love. We got to share this love. We got to express this love that we share. Yes, sister. Can't hear you. think everybody go to the rescue mission but the thing with is but well, if, 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 if that's the way you want to give I, I'm, I ain't got nothing to, you know against that okay. give well, to the I don't rescue. know if it's the rescue mission but it's some mission that they you know the people go to to get help yeah. you know so that's what I was wondering because that's what the announcement is on television I've seen several times it's not to give to the Rainer Kern but to give to the missions yeah. to help them but like you said too you did your part because you gave and I do too and whatever they do with it, that's between them and God. Am I wrong to have that attitude? 
it's the reason I did, they did it, I felt like the Spirit was talking to me. Because I, 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 I was sitting at the light, and I read that, and I read that sign, you know, and, and, and it just started eating at me, you know. And I have, I have been in that situation, and, and, and it didn't happen. But the, I, I just, it just felt like, I just felt to me, myself, that Spirit was leading me to do that. See, if you, see, this is another thing. You got to allow the Spirit to lead you and guide you. Because everybody out there, you know, is, is, is out there. It's not, see, some people is out there just because they know they can get a hand out. Thank you. Yeah. This is where the, see, the word of God in, in Jesus. And 12 said, now when Jesus had, had, had hardened, that John, heard that John was cast into prison, departed into Galilee. And leave, leave, leaving Nazareth, he came and dwelled in Capernaum, which upon the coast, upon the sea coast in border of Zebedee, what was that? That's what, the, that's what it says. That it might be fulfilled with which was spoken by Elijah, the prophet. So Jesus was fulfilling the scripture where he had already been uh, spoke of when Elijah was talking back in the Old Testament. But Jesus is our example in everything. Everything that we go through, everything that we're doing, Jesus done been through it. Jesus, shared, Jesus knew no sin, but he put on sin. Roman Jones did that illustration put on sin for who? He did it for us. Everything he went through, he did it for us to have an example that we can, we can follow his example, we can win. We can be, a, be that light that God has want us to be to the world and to, to, and to ourselves. Convincing the people that we are children of God. We can't do it by falling in, in, into anger, trying to handle things on our own, Every time somebody get uh, bent out of shape with us, we take and get right in there with them. You know, we can't do that. But sometimes we, we, we lose sometimes. We are in a test. Just like Jesus, and we put, uh, Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness. But the tempter came. Now the angel, after he, after he was fasting 40 days, the angel come and minister to us. But we got the Holy Spirit to minister to us. Same thing. We got the Holy Spirit that minister us to let us know when we are wrong. Because if you as a child of God, confess Christ as your Savior, and you become a child of God, you better believe it. The devil going to get busy with, on you. He going to get busy. He going to get busy because he want. He don't want you to go with God. He's trying to win souls and destroy you. Reverend John. Satan was not silly nor dumb, nor stupid. He knew what he was doing. Okay, he was he was trying to convince us, not Jesus. Yeah, yeah. In a, in a sense, because he knew that Jesus, he knew Jesus was the Son of God. Yeah. But listen what he said, if you be. If you be. Now, he knew Jesus was the Son of God. Now, why would he say, if you be? <laughs> why do I know that he knew Jesus was the Son of God? Because he was up in heaven with him. Show you right. And Jesus, in Luke 10, 18, Jesus answered it like this. He said, I saw my daddy kick you out of heaven. So why are you standing there saying, if you be the son of God? So he said, that's why he went to the word. He, he, the choice was, you can take it for yourself. <laughs> Here, you take it. Yeah. I already know who I am. Yeah, yeah. So that's where we have to get. We have to come to the point that we know who we are, who we belong to. Can't let nobody tell you you ain't saved. I know I'm saved. Got my ticket. Got my ticket. And one of these days he's gonna call my ticket in. And I know I, I just believe I I know that when I leave this when I, you can't see me here no more. I know where I'm gonna be at. I'm gonna be with the one that I followed down here. I'm making preparation every day, every day. Hardship and pain. 
trials and tribulation. I'm making tribul I'm making preparation every day. Every hour of the day. See, I told you, you, you can't be like an athlete. The athlete work up for two hours and go home and take and drink some energy drink and he can kick back. But we, you, Christian can't kick back. We got to run this race and run it like we to run that like how I call it. See, because if you if you set back on this thing, devil's gonna win. He's gonna put some on, put some at you, and he's gonna get the upper hand on you. See? No, the devil don't may not make you do everything, but the thing is, he's gonna put thoughts there, and if you react to it, see, the, the prince of this world is the devil. This is the reason so much stuff is going on in the world today. And, I, and I, it might help me last Wednesday on something other. I hear it on the news, and he opened my understanding up to what he was talking about, that culture religion. See, see the devil is busy. God, is no, God, God don't want his people to separate. He wants us together, unite. Wherever church doors is open, white, black, Mexican, Puerto Rican, Cuban, we should reunite. I ain't telling you to go to no church now. Everybody's speaking in Spanish, you know, whatever English, the language they're speaking. You know, if you don't understand it, stay where you're at. But get what you're at. Get something out of where you're at so you can use it. It'll make us better. It'll make us better. The word of God is, is good for us. And we stand on it. Have Janie making them coconut pies for me. <laughs> uh, all I got to do is drive by and say, Janie, I need a pie. Bam, I got it. Because she know what her brother stand, her, she know what her brother will do for her and when she come to him. See? A close-knit family. And the church should be the same way. We should be so close to one another that one can't fall without the other. Don't get all bent out of shape with one of them taking go off the, off the wagon. Somebody look at you wrong in here. Just show them some love. Hey, they might be having a tough time. Build one another up. Build one another up this time. Okay, y'all have a blessed day. Let's give our teacher another round of applause. And remember, it's, it's the word. It's the word of God that's going to get you through. It's going to get you through. It's going to get you through. Um, before we um, give the summary of the Sunday school, I want to remind you what we have going on this month, uh, Mental Awareness Month here at St. Luke. Um, last Sunday, we were blessed to have Sister Malone facilitate downstairs about the spiritual guidance ministry and using your resources. Um, this Sunday, we have Brother Kel Steins talk about issues in the workplace and family concerning stress. Um, this coming Saturday, from 8 to 12, we have a guest speaker to be coming. There are sign-up sheets, one outside of the double door. Sister Linda Lewis has a sheet. Um, please see her because we need an accurate head count because uh, there will be food served from 8 to 12. We have a guest psychologist coming in, and she will be talking uh, on different issues, uh, legalization of marijuana, um, the M um, legalization of marijuana, domestic violence. And um, we want you to come out and get this information, amen. These past three years have been rough for everybody, and it's affected us all in many different ways. We just learned downstairs how the suicide rate has passed, surpassed, Car accidents. Car accidents used to be the highest death rate we had in America. Suicide has surpassed that. So it's it's um, a true statement to say people are dealing with mental issues. But there is help. Amen? First of all, in the word of God, then God has trained and gifted men and women to help us through these difficult situations. So there's help available. So come out Saturday, 8 to 12. Next Sunday, we have Reverend uh, Kevin Thomas who will be downstairs during Sunday school. And then fourth Sunday, we have Dr. Teresa Barnes 
will be downstairs. And all these different things about stuff we deal with, uh, generational trauma, dealing with trauma in general, all these different things that they'll be speaking on this stuff, if you're not dealing with them currently, somebody in your household, somebody in your family, somebody you work with is dealing with them. So come out and get the information. So it's not a matter of if, but when life happens to you, at least you'll have the resources for yourself or to be a help of someone. Amen. Go ahead. Good morning, church. Uh, about mental health, I wanted to say this. Uh, the, the suicide rate has increased, but a lot of people don't know. Well over 70% of those who commit suicide are men. So you men don't think this applies to you. We're the ones mostly killing ourselves. So if you know somebody, even a young man, that are going through something like that, let them know that there's some help out there. A lot of them think there's no help. That's why they end it all. A lot of people think it's ladies doing it, and yes, they are, but over 70% of those who commit suicide are men. I heard a story, and I'm going to say this real quick, of uh, people who survived jumping off the San Francisco Bridge. You know what they most regret if they survive? Jumping off the bridge. Almost without a T, the psychiatrist that I've seen this video online says that without a T, nearly 99% of them regret the moment they stepped off that bridge. Because on the way down, they thought it could have been another way. So men especially, young men especially, we have uh, this seminar coming up on the 18th. If you don't think you need it, go anyway because you might need it in the future. And if you know a young man that's going through something or a friend that's going through something, an older man that's going through something, let them know that the, God has provided ways. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well said. Thank you, Reverend Cabin. That's true. Um, men, I, I know there's this thing called pride. But here's the thing. Either you can deal with the situation on the front end or deal with it on the back end. And it's easier to do some preventive maintenance than to play catch up. So there's no excuse, man. There's no excuse. And the beauty of it is all this is resources of the kingdom of God. And that's the beauty of the cross. The ground was leveled at the cross. Pride doesn't exist at the foot of the cross. Why? Because we all hurt and we all seeking for something. That something is Jesus Christ. So, so let, let's utilize this help utilize these services and if you don't want to come to one of these sessions we have uh, uh can uh, the men that work in spiritual guidance please stand up so you can see bubba bubba please stand up so they can see you the men that work in spiritual guidance ministry please stand up reverend cavett is one as well so if you don't come to one of the sessions you can come see one of us and we can talk privately we can meet wherever you want to meet, and, and there's help for you. All right, brother? Just want to let you know that. Thank you. So uh, pertaining to Sunday school, we had 70 attendees, and I believe um, we add the 21 that was downstairs. That would be 91. The total offering was 61.24. Amen? All right. Now you're in the hands of the Children's Choir. This is for the deacons. Got ahead. morning. It's a good time to be here this morning. You're not in California. You don't got no floods. Ain't no earthquakes. Ain't no freezing rain. You might not have lost no power. It might be slippery outside. This is the place to be. They talk about the devil. The guy that ran his car into the airport and they asked him why did you do that he said the devil made me do it the devil is strong so I think I thank him to I thank the Lord today not only for me but for you if you hear today it's because God put something in you 
And I thank you for coming. We will go to Matthews this morning. And we're going to start at Matthew 6. We're going to start at number 12. And I want you to really think about this. How much time do we really have to say I'm sorry to someone? How many people is carrying something in their heart right now that it's time to let go? The Father gave us the Son. The Son give us keys every day to succeed in this life. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. For if you, if ye forgive men their trespasser, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But listen, he always a but. But if ye forgive not men their trespassers, neither will your Father forgive you your trespassers. My brothers and sisters, this is a small thing. You should read the whole thing. Because our lives are now a trial and tribulation. I got a sister that can't see and want to come to church. I see people dying every day from one another, killing each other. God knows what he's doing, else you wouldn't be here today. So as we leave here today, if there's something on your heart, or somebody in your mind that you need to go to and say, I'm sorry. I forgive you. Don't go to sleep on it. Think about it. How much time do you got left? I'm getting ready to turn 74. I'm getting ready to have eye surgery. I don't know if, how I'm going to come out. But I know somebody that made me and mold me, took me out the streets. Took me away from the drugs. Took me away from the people. Gave me another chance to stand before you. My friend Deacon Mack. Me and him went to missions. Thank God I see him today. There's other deacons that used to sit here. And stand here. That's not here today. So I stand for my brother deacons that's going on to paradise. I pray for those that's here. I might not stand before this mic again. This might be my last time to tell you. Love somebody before you leave this world. Don't go to bed tonight being miserable. God bless you. Thank you for coming. Have a safe trip. And please don't speed, because speed kills. Amen. Amen. Let us bow this morning for a word of prayer. Thank God this morning. Our Father in heaven, we come once again before this storm of grace. Oh, Father God, we come with a thankful heart this morning. <laughs> oh, Father God, we come, Father, because we know you've been great, Father. Oh, Father, we know we can't say enough to thank you, Father. Father, we don't know how to thank you this morning, Father, for being so good to us, Father. Oh, Father, we thank you for those that was able to come out this morning, Father. We thank you for those that are on their way right now, Father. And, oh, Father God, we come this morning praying for each and every one, Father. Oh, Father God, we come this morning asking you to forgive us for our sins, Father. And thank you for being a forgiving God, Father. Thank you for being a good God, Father. Thank you for everything that you've done for us, Father. Oh, Father God, we come asking the blessing of our pastor, Father, and his beloved and family, Father. Oh, Father God, we can't say it enough, Father. Well, we thank you for this man, Father, according to your heart, Father. 
Amen. Continue to bless each and every one, Father. We pray for our assistant pastor and his family, Father. Oh, God, we pray for all these ministers, Father, that come out and uphold this word, Father, and be followers, Father, and try to carry this word of God out, Father. We just thank you for all of them, Father, God. We pray for our deacon board, Father, and chairman, our chairman, Father. We thank you for him, Father. We thank you for his strength, Father, and his powerful leadership, Father, in the right road and the right thing to do, Father, and try to teach us the right thing to say, Father. We thank you, Father. Father, just guide us, Father, and just stretch us, Father. And, Father, we come, Father, we, li we lift up those that sick among us, Father. We know some is sick among us. We know some we do not know, Father. But, oh, God, that we know you the God of healing, Father. We, we know, God, you are not you're the unchangeable God. Nothing changed. You change not, Father. We just ask you, Father God, that you continue to lift them up, that sick among us, Father. To, that bless them, Father. And let them know, Father, that what we don't know why people are sick, Father. We don't know everything. But we do know all things work together for good, Father. For those that love you and those that are called according to your purpose, Father. Just have prep breath them, Father. To keep their hand in your hand, Father. For you're the good God and you're the true God, Father. You do us nothing wrong, Father. You know, Father God, we come in, we get into our service, Father. Just bless this choir, Father. Who getting ready to sing thine song, Father. And bless the word that don't come from you, Father. That we can learn something from it, Father. And take something back out into a dying world, Father, and tell somebody about a good God, Father, and give somebody the good news, Father. We pray for love, Father, that we will love each other, Father. We pray for forgiveness, Father. Continue to bless us, Father. God, us and strengthen us, Father, as we go through this day, Father. This is our prayer this morning. In the name of Jesus, we ask, Father. Amen. Amen. Thank you once again for joining us in this devotion. Now we'll turn it over into the hands of the choir. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord, saints. This is the day that the Lord hath made. We'll rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. In spite of what it looks like outside, God is still good. Amen. God is still good. Amen. Amen.
Your head, by my. 
to go downstairs for youth church. Thank God for our children and youth. Amen. I heard a preacher say once, if you go, an old preacher told him, said if you go into a town and there's no diapers hanging on the line, you get out of town because the town is dying. If you got a church and don't have no children, you might well get out of town because that church is dying. <laughs> Amen. Thank God for our children. Amen. Certainly we thank and praise God for another blessed day that he has given us and allowed us to come out. I know it's snowing, and, but that's God's business. We come here to take care of our business and leave God's business to God. Amen. Thank God that he allow us to come out and be a part of it and to see it. My wife and I was coming in. We looking at the trees with the snow on it. said, look like a winter wonderland. Just a beautiful, beautiful win winter wonderland outside. So. Amen. I don't like it, but it's still beautiful. <laughs> Amen. And certainly thank God for uh, Reverend Jones last week, a wonderful message, a wonderful service that was held here. 